a study that was done back in the 50s by B.F. Skinner, the founder of behaviorism. And um, the study was very well summarized in a great book called 40 Studies That Changed Psychology by uh, Roger Hawk. We have to go back, back in time to the 1950s. Here is some video of rats in Skinner boxes. So let's just take a listen in on this, and then I promise to come back and talk more about your bowling style. The hungry animal remains active, but as the satiated one becomes adapted to the new environment, he settles down and becomes inactive. The hungry rat is active. He stands up near the bar, but just misses it. The correct response of pressing the bar cannot be rewarded and learned until it occurs. Stands up near the bar, presses it, but since he does not see the pellet and the food cup, he is not rewarded. Now he finds the pellet and is rewarded for approaching the food cup. From now on, he confines more of his activity to the region of the food dish. Okay, so there you have it. That's training a rat to press a bar. So what does this have to do with larger issues? Well, if you have trained an animal to uh, give you a dog to give you its paw or a parakeet to speak, then you have used Skinner's techniques. But of course, we can get animals to do more complex behaviors through a method called the method of successive approximations. So let's just take a look at some modern video. This is some video taken from YouTube, uh, used by permission by the author. And what you'll see here is the same kinds of principles being used to train a parakeet. Okay, so you see the bird uh, spinning the toy uh, uh, carousel there and gets rewarded. All right, spins it again. It's rewarded. So we could get this bird to spin this, this um, carousel quite a number of times as long as we withhold the reward for quite a while. All right, so now let's see how this method of successive approximations can result in a bird who can not only play golf, but he can play basketball, and he can play them both better than me. Can you shake hands? Shake hands. Good bird. Put the ball in. Good job, AJ. Pick up the ball. Thank you. Put the ball in. Put the ball in. Put the ball in. Good shot. Basket. Put it in the basket. Put it in the basket. Put it in the Put it in the basket. Put the ball in the basket. Good bird. Those people who weren't so crazy about Skinner's philosophy, that our behavior is all the result of reinforcement, challenged him by saying, how about something like superstitions? How do you explain that? Isn't that uniquely human? Well, Skinner set up an experiment to show that it was not and that it could be learned. So he put pigeons in a Skinner box, and instead of rewarding them for a behavior, like uh, pressing a bar, he just rewarded them. After 15 seconds or so, they just got a reward. And what he found out was these birds adopted be unusual behaviors. Some of them were twirling around in circles. Others were pecking in the corner. Why? Because that's what they were doing at the time the reward came to them. Okay, now I promise to relate this to your bowling style, and we're ready. Now, I'm not really interested in your style, that is, how you run down the alley and deliver the ball. What I'm mostly interested in is what you do after you throw the ball. Now watch here, this is a video also from YouTube, used by permission, and here's a young lady bowling. Now watch what she does after she releases the ball. She's got this leaning going on, right? This little leaning to the left in this case, right? She's trying to get that ball, all right? And now she'll try again, and here you see again, she's got that lean going, she's leaning to the left there, trying to influence the ball. Actually, what's happened is the ball has influenced her. The ball was released, and at one point in your experience, a movement of your body coincided with the ball knocking down some pins. The ball has conditioned you. That is why many of us, after releasing the ball in bowling, have adopted a variety of behaviors. Now, one last thing to observe in this video. Watch the younger boy to the right 
of your screen. He really has got the lean going. Okay, one final example of superstitious behavior, which would be explained by this very same process. Now, here are my children in the mall, demonstrating for me, acting out. I swear they do this in reality, but I did ask them to act this out. This is that behavior that maybe you also have, which is where you go up to the elevator and you press the button again and again under the belief that one of those presses is going to really be the one to get the elevator door to open. And um, luckily, one of the times that my daughter pushes the button, the door opens. So you know what? I guess I have conditioned her for life to press elevator buttons. Well, there you go. Well, folks, that's all for the Psych Files for today. I hope you found this interesting, and we return to our audio format next week. Hope to see you then. Thanks a lot, and take care. Feel free to visit the website at www.thepsychfiles.com and leave a comment, question, and I'll be happy to return that. Till next time, this is Michael Britt saying thanks a lot for watching the Psych Files.